Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we are going to continue materialize CSS framework tutorial by making this beautiful web page and using JavaScript related concepts in materialize CSS. Now you can see that we have a nice slider or a carousel here with some transition effects and uh, you have also these indicators you can click on them as well or uh, automatically it just changes uh, every five seconds or so. Now then we have down here some model box very easy to make so nothing fancy then we have also these light boxes that is if i click on them you can see that they get full size uh, zoom in so easy to make and also if i go responsive for navbar you can see we have this um, menu like hamburger menu icon here and we have this also as well here so we are going to make something like this very very simple and to get us started we need to first of all go to um, materialize css.com click on getting started you can either download the materialize css or let's just use also a CS a cdn that's easier so this is one thing then for the images we can use uh, lorem pixum images from pixum.photos uh, you can get random images by using this and given a different size if you want square images you can just simply have one size then um, i don't know like uh, grayscale images you can add question mark grayscale or for blur you can add question mark blur and that sort of stuff so it's easy so i just need to let's say copy this and let's say paste it in here and change also the size maybe to for example 800 so i will have this random image here okay now i'm going to use uh code sandbox.io instead of using my own code editor you can simply go there you don't even need to sign in but it's better if you do so click on new sandbox and uh, we are going to use a static one so click on static it just takes a minute to configure things here and once it's done you have like a boilerplate like so and the web page on the right you can resize it you can also click on this icon open a new window and then this is what you have so i'm going to keep it as well so I will use this one for mobile view and this one for desktop view. Now let's get rid of this H1 here. We don't need it. And we need to add materialize CDN here. So let's go to materialize CDN. For the CSS part or style sheet, we need to copy this one and paste it here. Also for the JavaScript part, let's copy this script and right at the bottom of the body we need one more thing for icons so let's go down below and here import google icon fonts so we need this as well so let's just copy these lines here and paste them um, maybe above okay so now we have access to icons to the css and to javascript good Okay, now under the body, let's start by making our navbar. So to make our navbar, we need to have a nav tag. So a nav, and then press tab, you have this one. Inside the nav tag, let's have a div. So with the class of nav-wrapper. And let's give, give, it, give it also a class of purple to change the background color to purple. Now this nav wrapper which wraps our nav bar is going to have two elements one is going to be a logo on the left and a menu menu links on the right so for the logo we need to have a class of brand dash logo let's just call it i don't know logo and that's it and underneath this let's have a ul an unordered list uh, and this unordered list is going to have a class of right why because we're going to push it to the right of the screen and it's going to hide when the screen is medium sized and smaller down so hide on mid and down means when the screen is medium sized or smaller this is not going to show up this list 
so we need to have some list items and in these list items we need to have some a tags because people are going to click on them to go to different parts of our uh, our web page so let's just have a home let's do it two more times and this one is going to be about and this going one is going to be contact now if i save this you can see i have this you cannot see this list items because it's medium size or small and if i go bigger you see they appear how cool and easy okay and now i am going to refresh this page and now we have this here as well okay now that we have this let's also have our side nav as well our side nav is going to have an id of slide out so we are going to create a ul with the id so like a hashtag or a pound key of slide dash out and we're going to give it also a class of dot side oops, side nav and maybe purple as the background color as well and inside this another list several list items so i have them here anyway so let's just copy oops let's just copy these list items because it's going to be the same menu for mobile as well and paste it in you cannot see it of course because this only is going to be triggered by uh, clicking on some icon or some menu link here now let's create that trigger button here as well so that is going to be an a tag and that a tag is going to well let's create an a tag and that a tag uh, is going to have some attributes for example data dash target so it's going to target some specific part and what is it it's going to be this id that we just gave it slide out so it's going to target that slide out part another one is going to be a, um, a class of side nav trigger so a class of side nav dash trigger so it's going to be like a trigger so let me just uh, make it smaller and if I just write something like menu here, you can see menu appears here. And if I click on it, nothing happens because we need to initialize it in our script. But instead of this menu, I, I, need, I can have actually an icon for a hamburger menu, burger menu icon. So I, I tag for icon and give it a class of material dash icons. And inside that, what is the icon going to be? menu and this comes from this is what, what we get this comes from this uh what was that yeah the google font material icons that we just imported so that is it so that's it okay uh now that we have this we need to initialize it in down here right below our script let's create another script here and now to initialize these things we follow the same procedure for most of them so it's, you, you're going to see how easy this is so we can create a variable const uh, like side nav side nav something like that it's going to target document.query selector it's going to target that class that we just specified for it that is side nav you see this class so it's going to target this these list items here and once he's <clears throat> done that we need to initialize them immaterialize always starts with uppercase m then they have some names like for example side side now with uppercase s again and then in it to initialize it initialize what initialize this now so side nav and it's not going to have any options so i just leave it empty like curly brackets now if i save this now if i save this and click on this one you see this appears so cool right so cool now i need to change of course the color of these items by giving it a class right here um Give it a class of maybe white dash text so this would yeah create some white text here 
yeah, much better now. Okay, so this is going to be our um, slider menu. Super nice. Okay, so everything is good now. You can see this is where the screen is large, and when the screen is small or medium, this is what happens. Okay, the next thing that we had was, let's take a look, was this kind of hero image and slider or a carousel actually with these effects. <clears throat> so for these we need to have a slider um, class. So right down here, let's have dot slider. Inside that we need to have several slides. So it's going to be an unordered list, an ordered list of slides with a class of slides. Inside that we have list items and every list item is going to be one of those slides. Now inside every slide we need to have an image of course. So let's just say image. And where does that image come from? It comes from this lorem ipsum one here, right? So let's just copy this and go back and paste it here. But I want it to be much bigger, like I don't know, uh, 700 by yeah, 300, it's okay. I can also give it um, some width element, like um, um, they can have a width of, uh, I don't know, uh, um, yeah, well, let's just make it automatic actually. So we don't need to give it any width here anyways. So all right, so this should be actually okay. Now, so this is where it comes from, but you cannot see them of course here because we haven't initialized this yet so uh, what about captions like this so now you can see these are called captions here so right under the image let's have another class another div with a class of caption and this is going to be let's say center align center dash align and the, let's also give it a background color of uh, purple and inside that let's have an h4 which says um, yeah like I don't know, header here and underneath that we can have a p tag with some lorem five lorem ipsum words and um, yeah that should be it so now let's have a three more two more of these list items so i can simply paste them here and here but since they have all the same size, the same image will be applied. So what I can do is to just change the size of some of them, and then we'll have different images here. So uh, yeah, like 600. We can, anyways, the, the, the width will be 100%, so no worries about these. Okay, now that we have these, uh, uh, yeah things here so the first one is center line maybe we can change this one to left align just to see difference and this one to right line as well okay now that we have this let's just go and initialize it as before not just we just did so right under this side nav this time we're going to have a slider uh, constant so const Let's call it slider, and this slider is going to be where document.query selector. This time, all because we have several images with the same class, so we need to select all of them. And the class was, of course, slider, as you can see. Where was that uh, slider? So we are uh, targeting this div slider, and uh, Actually, we are targeting only one because there's only one slider anyway. So yeah, let's just say, yeah, query selector slider. And then underneath that, we're going to initialize it just like before, m dot and slider with uppercase s. And it's going to be in it, but we are going to take this one. And now the options, are interesting here so the options if I want some indicators in the, and by indicators I mean like these things here so that people can just change them I can set it to true if not I can set it to false what about the height so I'm specifying the height of those here let's say 400 and transition 
So transition is basically, uh, I'm going to set it to 500 milliseconds. So like here, you see this change, this change, it takes, um, yes, yeah, transition takes 500 milliseconds. And it takes for the whole thing to go away like four seconds. So that would be a different one. That would be interval. Interval is going to be 4,000 milliseconds. That is uh, four seconds. Now if I save this, I should see these appearing here. You see? Now one, two, three, four goes away now. One, two, three, four. It should go away now. So that you can see that the headers are right aligned and then this one is uh, center aligned and next one is going to be left aligned and I can also change it like here super cool and it's also responsive of course you can see it so it says right aligned next one is going to be center aligned okay now let's get to the um, the model so right under this let's have another div now this time we're going to have some modal okay for the modal part we can have um, like a div and with the class of center to put it in center everything in center and let's have an h4 for example which says um, I don't know, one or no more and uh, then there should be a button which triggers that modal and that button well a dot btn uh, i have a tutorial up on these things and um, the previous tutorial is all about these and this should have a class of uh, model trigger so model dash trigger and uh, where it goes under href it should go to model one id of model one and trigger yeah maybe i can give it a uh, oops there should be uh, yeah like this and some background color as well so then I should have it like this but there is nothing in it so let's just fill it in like uh, I don't know like click like this or I can also add an icon as well uh, like for example I dot material dash icons and let's say um, let's take a look at the material icons in components under there's icons here so let's choose one of these for example um, yeah I don't know so let's see yeah, let's say, I don't know, like camera alt. Yeah, just some random things here. Uh, yeah, or, or maybe simply send. Let's just say send. And if I save this, I should see this on the left. So what I can do is just put it to the right. So I can add another class of right to it. And it would be on the right now. Now you can see it's on the right, so cool. But it doesn't work, of course. I need to initialize this as well, and I, and I need to also assign some modal text that is right under this. I need to have <clears throat> uh, a modal like structure first. So under the bottom button, let's have a uh, an a div with the ID of modal one that we just targeted here. And that model one is going to have a class of model as well and let's just say it's going to be purple and white text and text is white so we can have two parts a model content and model footer so the first one let's say model dash content and this is going to be h5 i don't know model header and then underneath the p tag which is like lorem 15 words something like that and under the model so this is going to be model content now let's have model footer as well so dot model dash footer this creates a model footer and this model footer is going to be maybe just an a tag and an a tag of like this and it's going to have a class to close it off so oops cool cl 
class uh, model dash close so it just closes that off and it's going to be also a btn and yes let's take a look well nothing has happened changing again we haven't initialized it so we should go down below in our javascript section here then let's uh create a comment like okay modal all right now for our modal just we do the same thing that we did here let me just copy this actually and paste it here well the only difference is changing these names of course so let's have a modal box for instance and it's going to um, target the class model that we gave our model and m dot model with uppercase m is going to target of course this model box that we have already here and yeah that should be it now if i save this if i click on it you see this oh this one i should change actually yeah so this appears okay so the model yeah close button doesn't have anything so i just add a close to it now you see close or i can as simply add something else as well um i don't know like an icon but i think it's good enough anyways so this is how this appears it is so cool so easy to make now the last one is something like this where is where was that uh, this one here these light boxes so we are going to make these as well by going to this part here and let's just say modal no uh what is it light box okay let's put them all inside a container so that there is some left and right margin and let's create a row i've talked about grid system and row and columns before in the previous video so we're going to basically create a row like this is a row three columns if the screen is large two columns if the screen is medium and one column if the i mean yeah one uh, column in each row when the screen is small so we need to create a column so when the screen is small it should occupy 12 columns that is the whole width if the screen is medium it should occupy six columns that is half uh, the width and the screen is large occupy four columns out of 12 that is one third now in each column we need to have some image so again we are going to use image and the image well let's start from the beginning again so the image image is going to have a class of responsive dash image uh, this is something also i've talked about before and then or another class of material boxed like so so this is for the material box and where is the image coming from so again this is where it's coming from so let's have it here and maybe let's just have a square image of uh, i don't know 300 pixels and we can also assign it some width as well here so mm, yeah like here let's give it a width of uh, yeah i don't know 500 or yeah 650 for example and uh, yeah that's it so now ha let's have three more of these columns so let's just copy this column paste it two more times and save this and here you so let's see yes so you should see only one because uh actually there should be more let's see why that is um column okay i think the reason is yeah well i don't know uh, we'll just check it in a minute so that is how you create these 
Okay, the worst thing happened. Now, okay, now back again. All right, so now we have, let's do it again. Okay, now that we have these three light boxes here, they don't work if I click on them. So what I need to do, this works quite well. So what I need to do is to initialize this as well. Now to initialize it, let's go down below again. Under this, let's create a comment of light box. And here again, like just like before, just like this one, let's copy this. So we are assigning it to something like a constant. And this time, let's say it's material, oops, box. It's material box, material box. And we are going to actually select all now because we have several instances of that material box. So material, this time is boxed. So this is the class that it had here. And there are three of them and I want to select all of them. So that's why I'm using query selector all. And now we need to initialize it by, oops, like here again, m dot, and then here, material box, no ed at the end, in it, initialize it, and use this element here, and no options. So I leave this empty, let's save this, and if I go back and if I click on these, it doesn't work, awesome, why not? So let's see if we have everything in place. So material boxed, material box, m dot material dot in it, material. Mm -hmm. So const material box document dot query selector all dot material boxed. Okay, so it did the same as these. It is the same because uh, it's been chosen. So maybe there is some, I don't know. Um, okay, working now. All right, let's just go. All right, now you can see that this is working quite okay. You see? All right, now we have this beautiful kind of web page here with all these elements, a navbar, a very nice slider or carousel. And of course, you can change the padding as well. And also a model like this and also a light box like so. And as well as a, um, uh, let me see. Let's Okay, as well as these, so you can see this is also like, so very nice and easy to make. So that was it for today. Thank you very much for watching and listening.